morning. Mm -hmm. um, it's a pleasure to have you here, Shahia, with us at the SKN Alliance. Sure. So today we'll be focusing on transgender community and this is our fourth series, as I said. And just wanted to know if it's okay to ask a few questions about your experience and stuff that you've been going through and dealing with. Sure. Good morning, everyone. Everyone listening. All my life, gay, individual, mother say, good morning. <laughs> okay, so my first question for you, uh, of what I would like from you, is tell us about your experience growing up and coming out both to yourself and to others. Well, that is such a good question because I could never give you a specific answer and age when I really came out. Because I felt that as I was born, I was already out. And perhaps in saying that, expressing my emotion as a child. Because growing up, when you know you look at me and look at the other kids, you could tell that something was off, something was different. Too feminine, too, you know, the society boxed these type of questions towards me. And I know, I think all my life I had been gay. Coming up as a young child, a young, I was born a boy and I consider myself the expression of what God gave me, you know, because I wanted to express that all the way from coming up until now, I continue to do that. So to answer that question, I just felt that at a young age, I like around 10-ish, I basically had collected every hormone and every feminality as a young boy. And, you know, my fam did accept it, they didn't know, <laughs> they sent me to church, they, you know, I had to go by the, the manner that my aunt raised me. And, you know, I know coming down to the question, you will also get more feedback on why family is very important in the LGBT community. Because I just feel that when you don't have that support, there will be a betrayal in your behavior in society today. However, I just feel that when you looked at me at a young age, you knew what my you knew what the outcome was gonna be. Because I could not play myself and be something I'm not today in the society. So I just feel that all my emotion, all my you know expression then would have considered you to accept me. And you know, we can go further in going further with the <laughs> question the because you know <laughs> perhaps you know i always say that you know i remember when you know the, the the boss came to me about the project and what she wanted to get me into at that place i was not in a good place remember yes, yes, yes. coming back here and you know you could you want to figure things out and you want to make sure because i always say my, if I have to go into this LGBT as a, as a product, as a first transgender in the community that has her own business, his own business, you know, I had to make sure that there was a safe space for us, that when somebody see people like me, that I represent every gay people. Because you have to remember the root that you came from. And as a transgender in the community, I feel like I wanted to stand behind Caribbean transgender matters. Because it's just not happening. Okay, goosebumps. It's just not happening in the States, in the in you know, in the UK, in the Europe Island continent. It more happened also in the Caribbean island. And that's it why some people don't understand when you get the whole, you know, the whole experience of a transgender, it's a total different from a bush, it's a total different from a woman who's gay, and it's a total different from, you know, the, 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 the woman who was born woman and have to express themselves as a man, you know? And to accept the fact that I was born a man and express myself as a woman, I feel that the respect is what matters. When it boils down to you know, the society and, you know, getting good treatment, getting the love and respect, you will feel it. Because when you try to nurture the society and they see the respect that I give off, I just want that energy back. So why I can't get that commendable? Why I can't? I have to step, you know, I step myself away and I work on me. 
is that I risked my life so people can really see the oneness of me. I did not want to go do Botox and, you know, get y'all all amp up or get y'all, no. No, I didn't want it that. Because I told myself, but God bless me, let me embrace it. I feel like my whole feminality was to embrace it at a young age. Well, I feel like you answered that question very well. Very, very well. So, I'm just gonna jump right into the next question. Sure. Which is, what identities feel right to you right now? You know what? That is the most depression <laughs> that we as gay people have to deal with because you know we put ourselves in to fit the elements in the caribbean island and you know in every day not a good day there are times that i will forget when i was born because you know you put on this i'm gonna be a woman it's not hard it is not hard for a man to just wake up the next day and say he wants to be a woman. Because it has to be a connection. When you put that battery in a remote, the battery will work as a remote. It's the same way as a human being, as you told me what I, I put myself, the description of me, and my, you know, what I look myself as, because I now have learned that we all have to live life, have fun and die. You know, so I basically, express my feeling as a transgender and I can put that more in American way a transsexual that's what I classify myself as but what I try to do I try to dominate the society of the way how they think in their small box and that all deal with the sexuality every person want to know what I have between my legs Everybody wants to know. They are so worried about I want to know. But that's not what I want you to know. What I want you to know that I am a transsexual. See it, respect it, and leave it alone. Because every day I'm not going to look perfect. There's one day I'm going to look rough. There's the next day I'm going to look together. And that's all deal with the depression that we have to go through in this community. You see the glitz and the glamour. You see everything but you don't see the depression of a gay society. And it breaks my heart to see when people are out there and they have to put their stuff in a safe space looking over their shoulder, especially when you just want to enjoy life. So I'm supposed to what? Put myself in a mental stability? I'm supposed to put my brain down? No, I can't do that. So I wanted to, to go out there and create a space for y'all, for everyone. Because everyone's not the same. And I'm not better than no one. I'm just raised in a way that how my aunt and my family brought me up. You know, and I'm just embracing what I love. Yeah, you know, let me tell you this, what this what my family, one of my family members told to me, had a, a conversation with me. Just a couple of days back and I was so deep in a depression, but I had to get myself together. I had to take off all the nails, all the this, all of that, because I told myself. When I die, I want to be burned. You know, my family tried to tell me, oh, you know what you're doing? You know, you're going to hell? Mind you, it's blood family. And I know there are times people say things and they don't worry about the hurt that come behind what they have to say or what they're trying to come across, especially when you're supposed to be my family. And it breaks my heart because I got in a depression. I got in a depression and when I was in that depression my energy only protected me. That's why I keep telling myself, why do I have this strong energy? You know when you go out, you're like everybody just and I told myself just because I'm being me. Because you can be you, we at the LGBT want to fight for a space, a safe space for us. You see how the US has a, a system for the LGBT there? And you know, the UK has its own system for the LGBT. When are we are going to be safe out here? When can we have a bar that has LGBT colors that you're not for sure you say, you know what, we're not we're not with that. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna let y'all be over here. When that can be embraced without being fired 
and being, you know, put down and, and, and being all stones, sorry. It's called stone because I feel like the same thing they are doing now to us is the same thing they did to Jesus. They crucified that man and put a nail on him, the same thing they're doing today in the society, crucifying each other. I had to separate and I said thank you very much for sending me on those workshops because you know, those workshops is what really helped me as an individual because I had to really sit down and say I had to school myself, go on the encyclopedia, know what I wanted, but I wanted everything to be raw. Yeah, time I said, Tiny Man, I don't want anything, you know, because you know, because I had to create an energy of safe space for myself, for others, and who I represent in the LGBT community. And to be a transsexual, I had to make sure I had, because I want people to be inspired by it, by my journey. I wanted people to look at me and learn from it. Because social media is also playing a part where a lot of people who want to be famous, you don't know what's going on behind those doors when they're not on set, cameras and all this stuff. And I told myself that's not what I want. I want people to see me, I want people to see I want people to see the fun of life, embracing what you call living life is the essence of being humble. And those workshops really opened my eyes. I'm like, okay, I got to go far. I can't just I cannot see my transsexual sister get hurt. You know, I cannot see that, I cannot see, I cannot be, and that is why in the society where we live in now, especially, and that's the next thing with our gay community here, we have to learn how to love one another. We have to learn how to be, stop being too competitive with our own people. Because when the strangers hit us, it's you, you have to turn around to us to try to nurture you out of that depression. And I had to make sure that I was going to stand as being a transsexual here. Okay, well, on the note of family though, I feel like you, you were reading my mind. I just want to know, have you found support from your family or even just the community? Well, the support that I get here, I must say, in 2022 because I came back here in 2014 and this is 2022 I am not going to be an ungrateful person I am not going to bash anybody but I can be on the scale of 150% of tolerate has has been you know accepted by the community because you know at, in the community I am a a business owner of souvenirs, luxury pampering service. You know, I have I meet different energies every day. People see me when I'm not even in this type of energy, and people see me when I'm just in another type of energy and drawing life. But I must say, and I give that back to my people because you know, people say things, and when people see me, the love that they give me is so much respect. Because they can look at me and say, you know, what makes Shahi so different? Shahi, I mean, I used to just leave, leave Shahi alone. I used to remember every minute somebody will, I would have a conversation with, you know, with individual, and I had to learn to accept the fact that if she called me, he or her, not to be, not to be depressed. Because they don't know any better. They don't have any schooling about our life. They don't. That's why you have documentaries, I mean documentaries out there, of different transgenders all over the world. Everyone is different. Everyone is different. But I could honestly say the love that I have for my family is the most important that once you can call that family member and they can pick up that phone. Once they can send you anything or, or even talk or even you having that connection with your family. Because I keep saying, I put God first, sorry. I put God first to the most high. Because everything that he does for me and everything that he knew how he wanted it, he's the one that grew me. He continued to grow me. And I give God thanks for that. I think that's a lot of love that I can get from him. Because if I could love him and I could love my family, I could actually love people who want to be around me. 
you know. But at the same time, we have to be very careful by the blind you know, from the society today. You know, because, you know, like I said, everything not going to be perfect. You're going to stumble on the up and the down of the society. But I keep my head. I keep my head up. I put my shoulder off. Let me tell you this. People might not know the journey that I have went through, but I have nothing to hide. You know why I have nothing to hide? Because I'm not perfect. Yes, I have been a feminine. Yes, I have got deported. And yes, I am a transgender. And you know what I can honestly say about that whole experience that I went through in my past? Is that I have to tell myself every day I look in that mirror, is that you are not going to go back to that place. You are not going to be a 10 foot backwards for no one. And let me tell you this, because that I continue to go forward with my life being humble and expressing myself and letting my hormone see the world, you know, I basically had to love myself. I had to love myself. Because I told myself, if my family is not going to love me, I know God loves me, and I know if I could love myself, I could love others. No matter what I have ever been through in my life, I have never let that bring me down from stopping me from what I wanted. Okay? I've never let that. But you have to love yourself. That's the most important thing. And if you have family love out there, don't take it for granted. Don't. Because when they are up and they're gone, honey, woof, you know, I could give you a little story that I named the business, my own business, after my aunt who died. And I was locked up. I was locked up. I was really doing time. And, I, and to have somebody come and tell you you just lost a family member, you know how hard that is. You didn't even get the chance to tell you goodbye. You have to go through all of that. Then you still have to deal with that. I went. But you have to tell yourself and look in that mirror and I tell myself every day, I'm not going to give up. No. For what? I'm going to fight. But I'm never going to give up. I never see myself to kill myself. I see myself to say, you know what? I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> That's how I deal with my depression. I'm going to sleep. Don't you see why we drink alcohol? Why they have alcohol in the bars? <laughs> They have alcohol, alcohol in the bars for us to relieve our stress. But you gotta make sure you believe in those that you might stay in space. It's the same way if we are gay, you have to be in a stay in space. Oh wow. <laughs> uh, I just want to know, what challenges have you faced? And have those challenges shifted over time as you and or your community have also changed? Yeah, I feel like the community and the society of, you know, St. Kitts and Nevis, it has, it's, in, it's, it's in a better place without the help of the government. I feel that when people can actually see different type of gay and the humanity in the society, they're going to respect us because now they see that there are gay people around in our country. Um, we have not reached to where we want it to be yet. I mean, when I say, like, getting that real love from the government that we can put you on in the office in the government house and put that label on the door LGBT SKN Alliance slash transgender matters that you know that you have a connection to police reports you have a connection to where the bout is I mean it's about that's the step that we want we 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 reach to the level of the society and they see us and they see how we fashionable and if they see us enjoying ourselves yes we, we read that, but we want the real respect, we want the love, we want to be protected in the government, you know. And that is something that we need to work on in the community today. That is the only challenge that was stopping us, you know. And that is why you see, I wish that each and one of us can come forward and help. Because it could be your son, your daughter, a brother can be connected to a gang member and they're gay. You know what I'm saying? It's going on all over the world. And I was just looking at this talk show because I love to watch TV. 
and I was looking at this talk show where they at Love and Hip Hop. I don't know if y'all heard of it, but they more touch a lot of LGBT, um, you know, structures and different the way how people are different, especially like I said, let's go back, Bush Queens. Um, you know, they ha you have the LGBT, you have the femme bushy girl, you know, you have different type of hormones and different type of depression and different type of expression of different people who are gay. You know, so I wish that all of us could have that in office and we have one of each representative of each, you know, people and the people that know the homework when it comes to the LGBT, you know, people that know the rules, the points and everything, you know, once we can get that in office, I think we'll be in a better place. I think you will see that now the government will want to pop a <laughs> excuse me, the government will want to pop a um, what you call a gay school for y'all. Really, the cap, I have us all together because I mean, hey, some people might not even want to go to school because they're gay. They don't even know how to express themselves. Young people, you can see them. I just smell them, see them when they pass me. And you know what the feeling I get from them is that they need help. So if we don't have a space for them to come and provide a space for them to come, because I mean, come on now, money. Money can make people happy. But one thing money can do is the power. It brings power when you use it in the right way. And I think that is what we need, especially in the Caribbean island. And that is why I basically went into saying, no, I don't want to be selfish. I want to name it as Caribbean Trans Matters. That is the revolution that I'm going to go by. You know, because I am a victim of a situation that got involved with the police here. And I am trying to work my way in thinking positive with it. Because you have to also remember I have family. You know, I have y'all. I have to make sure that you think. But you know what? I leave it in God's hands. I leave everything in God's hands. Because money cannot make me happy. Justice can make us happy. Justice. So we just need that justice for us because they they go they will act as if like we are not important on the front on the front magazine but they're going to treat us different under the magazines we don't want that we want to stand next to the we want to stand next to, to the premiere knowing that that is a representative from our lgbt community and i can't wait for those changes to happen well I have to agree with you on half of those or even all of those points when it comes to the government and just people standing up for the LGBTQ community because we really need more representation and stuff like that. Um, but I want to know what's your challenges in the trans community? What's your personal challenges? What are the things that you have faced that you know you just would like to change? You wish it wasn't like that. It is just about. Mm -hmm. That's all. The disrespect. Disrespect custom, customer service. Everything. Those are the challenges that I um challenges out there. Here. At the transgender. You know, because if you can treat me like a dog, I can feel it. You're telling me I'm not welcome in this world. So those are the challenges that I had to experience as being disrespected. And mind you, I don't beg anybody for anything. And I would expect that none of my gay sisters and brothers beg anybody for anything. Because you have to work hard for what is yours. You have to. And imagine you work hard for what is yours and you go into a space. And that is what it is. Again, going into a space, being exposed, and people want to disrespect you. That is a no. That's a no. And if, if, and I always tell myself, if someone like me, or even in the LGBT community, is having a disrespect attitude very different from me, then we have a problem now. 
Then I feel like my brothers and sisters who are in the community need to open your eyes and be careful how your behavior is around others because it can turn back on someone who really don't have no harm in the society. You know? So I, I urge my, my gay family to be out there, be safe. Be safe. I'm not saying you can't enjoy life. I'm not saying you can't you can't let go out. You can't get loose because I know I know that. But all I'm saying is to carry yourself with respect. Respect is a tool, it's a power. That's what we are fighting for. Happy Black History Month. Because everyone that had been there in the past for us, they was fighting for respect. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why you see we can go back to Malcolm X. We can go back to Martin Luther King. We can go back to Walter Park. They were fighting for respect. So if everyone had the right, why we can't have a right? So those are the challenges. I'm just fighting for respect every day. You know, I leave my house and I say, you know what? You know, I look good, but I just want to give off energy of respect. Some people might take it in a negative way. Some people might take it in a positive way, but me, I want to make sure I give off respect energy everywhere. So because you, know you think it's very, you think it's, it's like cool to leave your house and then you come back without a shirt, you come back with a bus head, you come back just traumatized by the nightlife of, of wherever you was. And then not only that, I mean, just living life. You want to leave your house with respect and come back with respect. That is the most important. And if somebody gonna disrespect you, you know what I did tell myself now that I have experienced a lot of stuff in my life today. I want to be 37 years old. I told myself the best thing I can do now is walk away from something. Because I cannot I, I cannot afford to lose all this that I built from 2014 to 2022. To lose that for them. No. I cannot afford that. So it's all born on to respect. It's all born on to respect. I that what those are my my worst challenges in here. You know the disrespect. Okay. Well, as you know, we had to talk about we talked about the challenges. So we have to talk about the good parts. I would like to know what particular what um is particularly joyful or rewarding about being a part of the trans community. What that do you I, love most? That I can show my flaws. Mm. That is the most gift thing I enjoy. Like I, I can show my flaws and I can just show who I am. Last week, Friday, I went out. I'ma tell you this, how people is. When people come around you and you look good, and you're happy, they will do anything to destroy that. And when I get out of my element of enjoying just the little things that I love, and everything that I love, I always tell people, they say, what is your joy? I like to look good, my good, enjoy my life, because I work hard. Those are what I love. That's not hard. And, you know, I always tell myself that when I do leave, when I go out and let people say, oh, you look good, and you know, the compliment, the feeling, you know, you get the, the reward that you get. I'm glad that people can see those flaws. And I'm glad that I can live in those flaws. Some people might not like them. Some people will laugh after it, but you have to be the strong individual to hold your flaws up. You know, because I look in that mirror and I say, okay, girl, this is what it is. Can't okay, do better than that. Now, if I go and be somebody that I'm not, then we have a problem. You know? It can't get no better. It's good to embrace you. Embrace you. Embrace it. I love to work out. That's one of my joy. I love to work out. I have really separated myself from going out there. Like, people see the difference of a transsexual working out in the gym and doing 
But now I have come back on the inside in my space. Because I, I know, I understand, like, you know, I understand what people is. I understand that, you know. So now, working out at home is the most joyful thing I love. And what I have now tell myself, I'm not going to stress myself in trying to, to be a superstar or look like a model or no. Like my home will tell me, bitch, stop, excuse for my language. If you tell to stop, I stop. Because I know my heart can't take as much. But working out is it, very good for me. And as, it, as you know, I love to play my little TikToks. And yeah, you got stuff that make me happy. You know, I do things, I indulge in the positive things and let people see how I embrace my joy. You know? And I'm glad that I can do that. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. I'm loving, I love when people call me and say, you know, you know if somebody was sharing your video. Those little things is what helped, you know. Because one day you might never know the premiere might be looking at them like, okay. You don't know. But I could feel it, I know. And that's the respect, you know. Most respect I also get from the government. Individual is on it. I wonder. Because I understand it. You know. But we, we, we basically don't want to go that route. Because we're not an enemy. We're not an enemy to no one. We, we, if you look at it, I know you're, you're born here, I was born here, I was born here, so I'm not trying to be, uh, you, know how, you know how they say, a private investigator of another. I'm basically is a victim. Plain, black, simple, and that is how it, you know, that's how it has been. Those are my joy. I love to listen to music. Those are my joy. Yeah, live on life, you know, my motto is to always be prepared, always be prepared, because you may never know, it's either, let me tell you something, if you, that's what I say, if you know for sure that you think about something before you get into that, think about all the stuff you built, that's why you say, I don't want to see why people is out there fighting down each other, pulling down each other, no, we need to stop that, especially in the gay community, we need to stop that. I mean, come on now, we gotta whip our hair back and forth, somebody mad at that? You bend over, you have a little dance, somebody's mad at that? Now imagine when a boy who's hiding sexuality and he become drunk and high. Okay. You look at that, and what you do, you disrespect that. Now he goes and hangs himself, because he feels he's not welcome. You cannot allow people to feel like that. Okay. I just run from it to know. If I feel like they come in, I run. I press my lock on the door on the car, and I jump in and I speed go home. Because I know that's a safe space. Walk away from it, man. Enjoy life, but walk away from the negativity. So, I would say, with those things that you as a person struggled and still is struggling with and still have to deal with because that is just life. Mm -hmm. For somebody like you or like us, what who you who or what would you suggest to somebody to get support, to get some sort of help? Who would you suggest? What would you really think that you would say? Family. You go back to your family. Um, like I said, a stranger is not going to protect you. I always believe in that. You never allow, you can't go and pull all your eggs out of your basket to someone else. Be careful who you talk to. My suggest to anyone who's going through depression, you know, going through not feeling very much worthy of thyself, or take the time and just look around you and tell yourself, you know what, it will get better. If you need help, you go to your family, you talk to your family. Because you know what, I had to learn. Yeah, I, I remember one time, you know, telling my aunt this, uh, I'm like, you know I'm gay, right? She was like, she didn't answer. She just, you know, because I feel like she was not ready for me to tell her that. But she knew it, but she didn't, she wasn't ready to accept it. And I think when you try to nurture your family on how you want to be respected, it will take time for them to get it. But I don't think your family want to see you get hurt. I know that most gay people does not get 
that much love out there. But I could honestly say that if we had um, an outreach center with, um, you know, a facility of gay counsel that know how to therapy you and know how to talk to you, and that's something that we need here. We need something like a system for the youth who are gay and who can, you know, who don't want no one to know that they can come to that base and be safe. So there are no system for that. You know, there ain't nothing, you know, they ain't nothing that could elevate the gay, upcoming gay generation today in society. There ain't nothing. I feel like, you know, having a little meet now and every month, you know, you want to have these plans for them. You want to do this for them. But is it safe for us to have that? I mean, you don't want to always hide these stuff. You want to be able for them to come in and, oh my God, my father beat me up because he see that I don't have a, you know, because as a young child, I remember my hand always being like this. I mean, like, you know, he had to start from somewhere knowing. And you know a mother knows their child when they are gay. So, I think those are stuff that, you know, we look at. Talk to your family. Tell your family the truth. Because the truth child that you free, that's a fact. And when you can live in your truth, your family will be able to accept you more. They might not think because I mean, they just work with that for now, you know, for now. But I must say that, you know, I had a chance in going to workshops, you know, in the LGBT then, and it helped too. Because, you know, I mean, you need that counseling. You need that counseling. I think it's all more down to counseling the youth today. You know, therapist, therapy, all of that. Mental. Because you can, you're not going to try to come to me and tell me not to be gay. You're not going to try to make me go to church, which I know church will help. But my feelings, my feelings. You know, so. A lot of therapy will help. And I think me therapy in my own self, loving myself, therapy in my own self is what ought to help me where I am today. You know? So love yourself, please. Okay, we're basically wrapping up. This is basically the last question now. Mm. Oh my god, what y'all leaving me already? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I'm just getting all comfortable into this <laughs> interview. Oh my god. Well, I'm um, I feel like this question is very, very important just for even us because, um, as SKN Alliance, because we would like to know what, what, what do you think we can do, the allies can do to support members of the trans community to just to help out that community as SKN Alliance? What can we do? Hear them out. I feel like because there are transgender that are living and not living in their own identity. And they are what you call the feminality of, of men. I think that if we can grab sources and get home or therapy for them at a young age, this can help them to explore their feeling. And you know, all that, you know. And that would be the most important thing to the trans community here is to develop a home therapy for them because it hurts to see when you see someone trapped in the wrong body you know you know something like myself I was trapped in the wrong I couldn't help it I was going about like oh my god I'm so feminine all over why is it I have a penis or why is it I have the organ of a man what is it that I have to do to deliver those feelings? You know, I remember getting castrated the first time I took my balls out. And I took my balls out. It was the worst feeling that I had to penetrate myself. When I say penetrate feeling, because I'm like, oh my God, I just took my balls out. Oh my God. You know, it was... It was, uh, it would change it and it was, and it, uh, dealt with your mental because I was not, I was like, but, excuse me, 
actively like the resources that we can develop for the transgender in the community they need hormones they need therapy and people like me i i'm glad i hope that they can take this interview and learn from it from a different point don't judge me about it and i'm just here for them you know just be yourself be yourself okay well no we know we are pin up now yeah. but i would like to know what message would you like to leave to the trans community and society what would you like to say to them well my last message to you because i always tell someone if i die today or tomorrow the people that have been on my journey i want to be able to feel the energy of that that's the message I can give to you. Every fight that we are doing for you is all about how to respect. You have to learn how to respect your friend, I mean, respect yourself, respect others, you know what I'm saying? And it shall be given on to you. So I think when I leave this message to you is as your mind thinker, and as a man thinker and as a woman thinker, always respect others. Always respect others. Respect yourself. Because I don't matter if you're gay, you're straight, you're bi, it all goes on to respect. We would not be here if it was never a disrespect. So because people can see what and I don't know people know what goes on. I mean, the place is small. This could be you hear Tiny will hear if something happened to me. You will hear if something happened to me. People talk. This is a Caribbean island. People talk. You go down castle and water here. But you have to respect yourself first. If you want people to respect you, and if they don't want to respect you, you continue living your life. You go. But I must leave this to you. That does not mean that if you're gay, that you should not step out in the community and be productive with your life. Do something with your life. If you have a passion for something, go for it. If you love to do here, go for it. If you love to be a fashion, go for it. Because you have to get up early in the morning and sex, you can get on and tell, you know what? This is what I love to do. Yeah. I cannot go and do a makeup on someone's face if I don't love it. It's the same way I cannot be someone else if that's not me. Be yourself. Respect yourself. Live life. Have fun. Leave it all. And whatever happened in the past, always try to respect it. You are not perfect. Understand it. Let it be apologetic and you continue to learn from it going forward. Like mother always say, honey, you know, I am mother. Because, you know, I understand both of them. You know. So, respect yourself, have fun, live life, be safe, watch your back, watch your surrounding, and I hope that this helped anyone who look at this, you know, of course, the Caribbean island and I would love to shout out every transgender in our Caribbean island because you are beautiful. You are so beautiful, that is why you're special, that is why you stand out, do not stand in, stand out. Okay, I would just like to say thank you for coming here with us and talking to us and sharing your experiences with us we honestly um couldn't thank you enough because oh no <laughs> is we can't imagine what it's like what it what it was like what it is like so we're just really thankful for you to share all these experiences with us and hopefully and we, we know it will help yeah. some people it will be inspired by a lot so yes people will look up to you and and realize that they're not alone so you know we're really happy that you were really 
I'm open to doing this and putting yourself out there. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me. I do appreciate the time that y'all come here at my home in my establishment, what I built. You know, you see that everything that I work hard for, I can back it up, you know. And that all matters. And I'm not trying to be no perfect. I'm just being me with love and respect.